Hey everyone, this is the second part of a longer tutorial series about basic payload setup. Now, if you've missed the introduction video, I have put a link to it in the description down below. Uh, in that video, we are just talking about what exactly we are building here. Now, for this video, I want to start small. Um, and we're firstly going to set up a MongoDB Atlas project, create a database, um, set up access control as well. And afterwards, we're going to initialize our project with npx create payload app and also adjust some minor things. Okay, so I'm now logged into my MongoDB Atlas account and I've created a fresh organization that doesn't have any projects yet. Now, first of all, we are just going to click on a new project. We're going to give it a name. Uh, let's name it basic setup. Clicking on next. For now, I'm just going to set myself as the owner. I won't add any other owners. And now we have to wait for a bit for the project to be created. All right, now we have to create our database. And we just click on build a database for that. And now we have three options. First option is a paid dedicated cluster. It's called M10. Um, second option is serverless. And the third option is a free M0 cluster. We're going to select that one. As I've mentioned in the introduction video, this free cluster is actually enough for most smaller projects. Then we're going to select a hosting provider. I'm just going to stay with AWS, select a region. I'm choosing Frankfurt here. The cluster name can be changed. However, we are just going to keep it as cluster zero. And then we're going to click on create. Now I will have to fill in a capture real quick. That should be it. And now we will have to create a first user. For now, I'm just going to take this default one with my name in it, click on copy to copy the password and click on create user. I will show you, however, how to set up proper access control later. Now, I would like to connect from my local environment, so I'm just going to leave this one selected. And they've already added my current IP address and whitelisted it so that I can access it from my local machine. So I'm just going to click on Finish and Close, hide the quick start, and now it is basically deploying my cluster. This will probably take around a minute or two, so I'm going to pause this video and now after our cluster has been created successfully, we're now going to take care of access control. Before we're diving into that, I wanted to give you some context about what we are actually going to do. So a cluster is actually not a database in and of itself. A cluster can actually contain multiple databases. Now, the access control that we're going to set up will be database specific. So we're going to make sure that our project can only access a specific database within that cluster. This might not be necessary if you just have one simple project and one cluster and one database in it. But it might make sense, for example, if you have multiple smaller projects that share a cluster and you still want the project only to be able to access its own database. There are also a couple other scenarios where this might make sense that I'm not going to explain here right now, but I'm going to show you how to set it up. So first of all, we're going to click on database access. This will bring us to the list of database users. And here we are actually going to set up two things. 
Firstly, we're going to set up a custom role that only has access to a specific database. And afterwards, we're going to create a specific user that we're going to use in our project that has this custom role assigned. So let's create a custom role first. We're clicking on add new custom role. We're going to name it exactly the way we named everything so far, basic setup. Now we're going to select database actions and roles and enter the name of the database that it should have access to. This can just be a simple string. We're going to call it basic setup db. And now we're going to click on add custom role. Afterwards, we're going to create our custom user. Um, we're going to call it basic setup user. Now we're just going to click on auto generate secure password and copy, and you should paste it somewhere. After we've created this user, we're going to click on custom roles, add custom role, and we're going to select the custom role that we have just created. Now, if we click on add user, MongoDB actually creates this user for us and it doesn't have the right to read and write any database, but it will have this custom role that only allows it to write to the basic setup DB. The second part of access control is whitelisting IP addresses. For this, we're going to click on the network access tab. And as you can see here, MongoDB has automatically added my current IP address to the list of whitelisted IP addresses so that I can access the cluster. Now, if we want to add a second IP address, for example, our server's IP address, we're just going to click on add IP address and put it in here. You can also click on allow access from anywhere to allow any IP address to access this cluster. However, this is really not recommended if you're using it in production because this will make your database a lot less secure. And last but not least, we are going to copy our connection string that we will need for our payload setup. For this connection string, we're going to go back to database, click on connect, Click on drivers. We can leave everything selected as it is. And down below, you will actually get a code snippet that looks somewhat like this, that you, that you can just copy and you should save it for later. Now, as you can see, there are two placeholders here. The first one is username, the second one is password. So in this placeholder, we're actually going to put in our custom user which in this case would be basic-setup-user and the password that we've just copied. Now, before we dive right into setting up our payload project, I just wanted to add an explanation regarding the connection string. We will actually have to do some minor formatting. I'm just going to copy this string right now, paste it into my notes. And as I've explained, we need to replace two things. First of all, the username, which is called basic setup user. And then we're going to paste in the password. The last thing that we have to add is our database name. So the database name needs to be added after the slash. So we're going to put basic setup db here. Now, generally speaking, you can pretty much add any name that you want, and this will be the name of your database. However, since we have enabled access control and we can only access this database with this user, we will have to name it this way. Otherwise, we will get an error when we try to access the cluster. Let's dive into initializing our project now. This part will be 
straightforward. We're just going to call npx create dash payload dash app. Now it's going to ask us to install the following packages. We're going to say yes. All right, now let's go through the setup guide. We're just going to choose a project name. We're going to call it basic setup. Now we can actually choose a template. However, we're not going to choose anything. We're going to start with a blank one. So I'm going to hit enter. And now we have to put in our MongoDB connection stream. Now we can totally start with a local MongoDB connection. However, since we've created the Atlas project already, we're just going to take our string that we formatted here and we're going to paste it in and hit enter. Now it will take a bit of time depending on your internet connection to install dependencies. After all dependencies have been installed, we are now going to adjust two small things. First of all, I'm going to delete the Docker Compose and the Docker file since I'm not using Docker. Obviously, if you do, you can keep them. And the second thing that we're going to adjust is in the nodemon.json file. Since I'm using JavaScript and not TypeScript, I will adjust the extensions attribute, not only to TS files, but also to TSX, JS, JSX, and JSON files. This is basically the setting which files should be monitored and which files should trigger a restart if they change. So if you, let's say you have EJS templates as well in your project, you can add them here as well. Basically any file that you want to trigger um, a server restart from. So that's it for the two minor adjustments for now. If we go into our project folder and hit npm run dev, this will start up a development server for us. And as you can see in the console, it successfully connects to our MongoDB Atlas server. It starts payload and we can now access it at localhost 3000 slash admin. If we visit that page, we're presented with the welcome page that um, wants us to create a first user. That will be it for today's video. In the next one, we are moving forward with adjusting the payload config further and also adjusting environment variables and the Webpack config. All right, take care.